maybe put a tiny little little bead there. Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to turn a, uh, an, an, a simple, easy little project. I've turned something like this before. I think I might have a video on it a while back, but you know, I turned a acre, some ac an acorn ornament uh, a while ago, and I think what I'd what I found is when you set them down on the table, they tend to roll around. So what I've decided it would be a good idea is to make these tiny little display p plates uh, to store them on. And they don't take long to make, so it's not a big effort. But when you give one away, then they've got some place to stable they can set it and it won't roll around and they don't have to worry about it, it breaking. So let me show you how we're going to do this. This one I actually turned out of a three-quarter inch uh, piece of wood. Uh, Actually, I, uh, I think I can show you the, I'll show you the glue up of this. Uh, other ways of doing it is if you got some nicer piece of spalted wood, this works great. I just found a scrap. It was just almost punky. Uh, I turned about four inch, uh, cut them about four inches uh, round on the band saw. I could have cut them square, but it makes it a little easier when they're cut round. There, there's no pith in it, and they're about oh an inch inch and a quarter uh, inch thick. So let's get started. When I did these before, uh, I called them ring bowls and they were a little deeper. I made them out of a, a branch of Bradford pear and actually I used a screw chuck and uh, uh, double stick tape. In this case I'm going to use more traditional approach because this is a fairly small disc. I'm just going to put it flat against this chuck. I've already got the center marked. So I'll bring it up and I'm just going to actually shape the bottom up against this chuck and then I'll put in a uh, uh, put a recess. Well, I did the ring bowls about a year ago. I made them deeper. I made them out of a branch and I used a screw chuck. I don't know what I've done with that screw chuck. I've misplaced it. So we're going to use a threaded glue block and we're just going to... Because this wood is, is fairly flat, I'm going to put it on here in this case with a piece of uh, double... a couple of pieces of double stick tape like this. Double stick tape will hold very well for this this application because it's it's not real demanding. This is not a real big bowl, and you need to use Turner's tape. That's a cloth tape. Don't use that thin uh, tape carpet tape. Make sure you use the uh, turning turning tape. I got this. <laughs> I've had this tape for over ten years. It came with my mini lathe, uh, when I, which I bought and used. And getting the edge of this stuff up sometimes is a trick, but I found the easiest way: just cut a little, cut a little slice in it like this, and then lift it up with your, with your knife, like that. Let's see if I can't get a better closer to the corner. Cut, cut in, lift it up, and that works out good. All right, now I've got the bottom, the center of this marked. I'm going to put it between centers and press it on here. Lock down the tailstock and key to this double stick tape for this kind of application is let it set for a little while. So we're going to let it set for a few minutes before we get to uh, uh, turning. It hasn't been quite 10 minutes but uh, I'm going to leave the tailstock support on it and rough the outside and then we'll put a, a small recess on it. So I'm going to use a uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge don't need a very big one for this project. Just doing a pull cut. The bottom of this is not even. I'm going to do a push cut here. That's close enough. I'm going to pick up the cut. Oh, it's straight up is 12. Straight toward me is nine. We're gonna cut and kind of pivot with this on my hip at about 10:30. Just kind of check the quality of this the surface here. Uh, it's looking pretty good for wood that's almost punky. Not not bad at all. Now I'm going to just round it off just a little bit more to bottom. Okay, 
so I've got the, got the shape pretty good. Um, this is spalted sycamore. I could have put this on with hot glue. Uh, that'll work too. That's what I actually... I used hot glue on some thin boards, three quarter inch, on a glue block. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take this scraper and just see if I can't get rid of a few ripples here. That burr is probably gone in more than about 30, 30 seconds and you've got to sharpen that scraper. But uh, that's a nice, uh, I think I can hit that with 150, 180 grit. So next thing I'm going to do is start putting a recess on it. So let me get the tailstock out of the way. Alright, let me just flatten that, flatten that bottom a little bit. Just come straight in. I want to put all my pressure toward the tape. I'm dishing it just slightly. Just chamfering in. Now, I'm going to do do a slight recess with these for these small bowl 35 millimeter ga uh, bowl gouge. So I've got this uh, caliper. That I'm going to mark mark the recess. And that's just about spot on. So all I've got to do is just open that up a little bit. I'm going to use a use a small spindle gouge. And I'm going to go straight in. Again, I want all the pressure in toward the tape. Now I'll come in here from the edge a little bit, support it with my finger. And I want this to be a very, very shallow recess because I'm not going to bother to reverse chuck it to make it uh, to, to ch uh, finish the edges. So when I when I finish with this side, it's going to be finished. So now I'm going to use my dovetail dovetail tool. Uh, I've got a video on making this. You can find on making this dovetail tool. The beauty of it is you can come in sideways even with tailstock support and get right in here. So I'm going to push straight in. And then I'm just going to bring that hook in, like that, right into the corner. Cut that dovetail. And we've got it. Now, I'm going gonna, gonna to sharpen this and I'm going to take one pass here off the bottom. If y'all are interested in how I put a burr on this thing, first thing I'm going to do is wipe away the burr. And then I'm just going to kind of bring this edge up and just hone it a little bit at an angle to get that burr. Bring it up flat and then just lift it off the edge. Doesn't take much. Give it a slight burr. Okay. And then I'm just going to caress the bottom here just a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that damage that I did. With that caliper, uh, the caliper, the divider. And I told you this is probably only about an eighth inch deep. Let's just actually measure it. And it is eighth inch. Maybe a shy less than an eighth inch. But that's going to be good enough to hold it with these 50 millimeter jaws. Now before I take it off, reverse it, i got to go ahead and sand this bottom to be finished with it. Because I won't get another chance to sand it uh, on the lathe. For the purpose this little uh, saucer or, uh, or tiny bowl is going to be used for, chances are it won't be turned over and looked at too many times, but the initial recipient will see it. So because I can, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of texturing on the bottom. So I'm going to slow this down a little bit, about 600, just slightly off center. I'm going to go straight on with this uh, Wagner tool. Just pressing hard. Taking my time, and there we are. We got that nice little bit of uh, detail. Now I'm going to use a, a point tool. Of course, make it pop a little bit. Let's go 
a little bit closer. Raise it up a little bit. Turn the speed up a little bit. And do it once on the inside, right here on the edge. Right here on the edge. Maybe put a tiny little, little bead there. Get a little bit of green scotch pad and just kind of take care of the frizzies. Now we've got it got it decorated and it's looking good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off with my fingers while it's here on the lathe. So I'm getting get my fingers behind it, just push on one side, just continuous push. Continuous push. And it is on there good. So I'm gonna take a small chisel with the grain running this way. I, I bevel this edge deliberately for this purpose be able to get an edge in there so I'm just going to force an edge in there a little bit and just slowly slowly work it back and okay that's got it and it's off I'll take this off I'm going to leave that tape on there it might hold the second one as well because it looks pretty good we'll see on the screw check with these 35 millimeter jaws these are dovetail jaws these are Sorby jaws on a that fit happen to fit on uh, also are the same. They use the same fixed uh, jaw fixings as the uh, Technotool Nova Nova chucks. So we're gonna tighten this in, orient the grain, orient this up and down, orient the grain up and down. So I'll get the same pressure on all four jaws. I've got at least a half inch. I made that base fairly flat because I want this to be fairly stable. This is uh, to hold an acorn. But now it's on there pretty good. I'm going to step aside while I turn it on. This running pretty true. And now we'll just start uh, hollowing this out. So I'm going to use this uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge and start hollowing. Just to be make it convenient, I like to use a depth drill. I'm going to mark because I don't want to hit the chuck jaws at the bottom of this. And I know that's too far. Just short, short of this mark. Come in here, ride the bevel, slowly lift it up and engage, open it up about 2 o'clock, slowing down as I get towards the, the center because although the RPMs are the same, the miles per hour in the middle slows down so you got to take the time to, to do that cut. Now in this case I got to fight this tailstock a little bit here. This handle it's sort of in the way so let me uh... because I got a sliding headstock let me adjust this. Okay had to reposition the camera. I've got a little more room now to swing the handle. This is a fairly uh, good sized handle about 16 inches I think so it was bumping into the tailstock. If this had been a bigger bowl, I'd, I'd remove the tailstock, but I don't want to go to that trouble for this small little little dish. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm coming in with the, the bevel almost 90 degrees to the work, bracing it with my thumb. Ride that bevel. Open up the flute a little bit. I'm telling, but don't have the tail the banjo or the tool rest tightened down like I should. Alright, a couple 
light gas in here. It bounces on this end grain. It's all in grain coming in like this this side. Okay. Okay, now I think I want to maybe make a little bit of embellishment on the rim here. I think what I want to do is go in. Hit the sides here with a little bit of scraping action just to get a round over. And then I think I'm going to take that point tool and put a tiny little bead right here on the inside. Like that. Roll it forward. Switch to a small spindle gouge to cut into the base of that bead so this will slope into it. Uh oh. That's what happens. It skates sometimes if you don't engage it properly. I got that cleaned up. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Face looks good here. Got just a little bit of damage there. I think all that will clean up with some sanding. Alright, now I've got a little bit of a, a dimple at the very bottom and I think the, for me the easiest way to clear that up is just use a round nose scraper. So that's what I'm going to do. Come in there and just get rid of that bottom. Got to keep your handle raised up just a little bit. Now I'm going to roll it up just a little bit, come around. Get a shear cut on the side. Now let's see what kind of surface I got. It's not bad. It's just a little bit, little bit torn. Um, got a little bit of ripple here, so let me. Uh, Let's hone this one again. Same thing as last time. Just take the burr off. Slide it. Just touch it. Touch it on the bevel. Then lift it up just a little bit. And then just bring it around. Alright. And we're going to bring it right up, up a little bit for a shear cut. Just barely touch the kiss of wood. Go real slow. Okay. I've used my Harbor Freight angle angle grinder with a, a mandrel and, and a two inch pad. But for this, actually, since I got it in my hand, I'll probably touch up the bottom with it with 120. the speed down. Lay's coming to me so I've got this turning in the opposite direction for the, for the smoothest cut. Okay. That got rid of any tool marks. I've got a fold over, folded over piece of 220. I'll do this by hand. Go to 320. Now I'll finish with some 500. And it looks very, very nice. I'm happy 
with that. I think I'm going to go ahead and put on some uh, scratch free and, and buff it on the inside with some scratch free abrasion. This stuff. This comes in craft supply. It's a little bit like AAA U Butte or Yorkshire Grip. Rub it in nice. Get it on all these edges before I turn on the lathe. Start buffing. And I'm expecting this to take that 500 grit and bring it up to closer to a thousand. Turn the speed up a little bit. Stay out of the line of fire. And it's taking it's giving it some amber color. That's okay. That uh, I don't mind that that look. And antique oil would do the same thing. So I've just about got it. All I got to do is take it off the lathe and finish it with some finish it with some antique oil. And there we've got a nice little little. Let me see it. Nice little bowl. We could we could put an acorn in for display, and it didn't take long at all. So, you know, if you got a little bit of texture, maybe a couple little beads, uh, a little larger for a larger acorn, you can make them a little bit smaller, spalted wood without any uh, adornment or embellishment at all. Uh, sometimes I make these with uh, a tiny little uh, recess. Uh, make the recess at least a half an inch. Uh, they don't have to be deep. I don't even bother to take the recess off uh, when I finish. It's less than an eighth of an inch deep, and for these small blocks, that seems to work just fine. Okay, there we are with a tiny little bowl to put an acorn in. If you don't make an acorn, you can always use it as a little little ring bowl. Get where you can see it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Appreciate any comments you, you want to leave. Put them below. Stay safe, my friends.